Hey everyone, this is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal, and today I want to talk about the cervical radiculopathy cluster, otherwise known as the cluster of Wehner. And so this series of tests consists of a decrease in range of motion of less than 60 degrees of rotation to the affected side, a positive Sperling's test, a positive upper limb tension test one, and a positive distraction test. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the cervical spine range of motion test and we are going to have the patient sitting upright like this. If she is having pain on this side, going down the arm, into the chest or into the shoulder blade, we will ask her to look to this side and if there is a loss of range of motion of 60 degrees or less, then that could be an indicator that she has a radiculopathy on this side. Now we're looking for nerve root compression. That could be because of a facet issue, a spur, could be a herniated disc, and that causes this discomfort that goes down the arm. The next test is a Sperling's test. And the way we do the Sperling's test, and we are very gentle with this, is we extend the neck, rotate it to the affected side, and laterally flex it. There's no need to push down really hard with this because if there is a nerve root compression, it is very easy to flare up. And a positive Sperling's test would reproduce the pain that she is having when she first comes into the clinic. The next part of the cervical radiculopathy cluster is going to be the distraction test. And what you do is you have the patient on their back, you take their head, gently flex it about 15 degrees, you can even laterally flex it to the opposite side a little bit, and give a nice gentle traction. Now this test is positive if the pain in the chest, arm, or shoulder blade go away and is reproduced when you bring the neck back to this position again. That would be a positive distraction test. Now the fourth aspect of this test for cervical radiculopathy is going to be the upper limb tension test A. And what we want to do is have the patient in this very neutral position. The cervical spine is going to be neutral, not tilted to either side. And then what you do here is you take your thigh and depress the humeral head, bring the arm up into 110 degrees while maintaining this humeral head depression. And it's very important that you explain to the patient that this is going to give them some discomfort down the arm. It's is uncomfortable with people who don't even have radiculopathy. But what we are looking for is a reproduction of their symptoms that they were having when they first came in. So we're going to depress that humeral head, abduct the arm, we're going to supinate the forearm, extend the wrist and fingers, and then slowly extend the elbow. Now when that starts to increase their symptoms like they were having when they first came in, they need to let you know that. Now the way you're gonna confirm this is by having the patient laterally tilt the head and neck toward the arm, and if the symptoms go away, then that is a positive upper limb tension test. So in conclusion, if you have three out of the four tests that are positive, then there's a high likelihood that you have cervical nerve root compression causing this radiculopathy that could be going down into the chest, the arm, or the shoulder blade. Now, it's very important that you follow this up with sensory testing, with manual muscle testing, and also deep tendon reflex testing so you can help confirm what level it's at and confirm that you have a radiculopathy. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks.